Gotham City is often described as one of the most corrupt, crime-ridden cities on Earth. It's a dark, oppressive city that will chew up the denizens and spit them out, turning them into deranged killer clowns, hideous monstrosities, and callous thieves. Among the sea of depraved criminality stands one man, heading up the front line for justice, and that man is Commissioner James Gordon. But Commissioner Gordon isn't actually the shining white knight we often think of him being, especially in Batman the Animated Series. If he were in charge of another city and he acted in the same way, there'd likely be protests calling for his resignation. But his fiefdom is Gotham City. The regular rules do not apply. So before going further into the BTAS version of Commissioner Gordon, let's look at the source material, the comic books. It may surprise you to learn that Commissioner Gordon is the only other recurring Batman character to have been there since day one. The very first appearance of Batman in 1939's Detective Comics 27 is also the first appearance of Commissioner Gordon. He appears in the second panel, sitting with Bruce Wayne in his study, discussing the exciting cases he's been working on. From the offset, the Commissioner shows some questionable decision making when he decides to bring Bruce along with him to a crime scene. Bruce is, of course, not a detective or even involved in the case in any way, shape or form. He's just a passive observer. Now, Bruce has an ulterior motive for tagging along. He wants to gather information for his work as The Batman. Note that his name was hyphenated in those days. This decision by Commissioner Gordon ultimately leads to the death of the perpetrator. If he hadn't brought Bruce Wayne along to the crime scene, Batman wouldn't have gotten involved in the case, and he wouldn't have punched the perp into the vat of acid. So right off the bat, things aren't looking great for the Commissioner. Now, Commissioner Gordon has made over a thousand appearances in Batman comics between 1939 and 1992, when Batman the Animated Series first aired, so it would be obscene to try and list them all. But you can broadly sum up the majority of his appearances as him acting as a source of information for Batman. In the rare few examples of Commissioner Gordon-centered storylines, the majority involve him coming into conflict with another figure of authority, such as Mayor Hamilton Hill or Councilman Arthur Reeves, because of his support for Batman, or he has some sort of illness, such as a heart attack or a stroke, and gets taken out of action. Every now and then, he would even be ousted and replaced with an anti-Batman authority figure, but invariably he'd be reinstated, restoring the status quo. Things changed quite a bit after Crisis on Infinite Earths, when much of DC's continuity was reset. In the seminal Batman Year One storyline running from Batman 404 to 407, published in 1987, Frank Miller reimagined the Commissioner as a more tough and gritty cop, standing alone against corruption. The story details the early days of Batman, but more than anything, it's a story about James Gordon. Gordon is a detective that has just moved from Chicago to Gotham City. Gordon had busted the corrupt police officers in the Chicago PD, and as a precaution, he was encouraged to relocate to Gotham City, arguably the most corrupt place on Earth. You'd have to think that this was probably a form of punishment from the establishment. Yes, Gordon had dealt with a few bad apples in the Chicago PD, but the GCPD at this point was a rotten orchard. Perhaps they were thinking that the rot would consume him. As the new detective on the block, he quickly learns the lay of the land. His new partner, Detective Flass, brazenly walks around, flaunting the rules, taking bribes, beating suspects, and treating the city like his own personal playground. When Gordon refuses to take a bribe or engage in illegal activity, Flass and the other detectives ambush Gordon and beat him senseless. While they wear masks, it's pretty clear who they are and why they're doing it. Rather than rolling over and taking the beating or giving in to their demands, Gordon isolates Flass and beats the stuffing out of him, handcuffing him naked in the woods. Flass would never admit what happened because it would make him look bad in front of his fellow officers, but now he and Gordon had an understanding. As unpopular as Gordon was with his fellow officers, he had the press on his side after a series of brave rescues. So long as he didn't cause a fuss, he could continue doing what he was doing. When Batman appears in Gotham and directs his attention to the corrupt officials, Gordon is tasked with bringing him in. Commissioner Loeb is incandescent with rage that Batman would dare target them, and as much as he dislikes Pius Jim, he knows he's the most capable cop he's got. Besides, if he fails, then he's got an excuse to fire him. It's interesting to note that while Gordon does do his best to arrest Batman, it's clear that he understands that Batman is probably the only sane response to the overwhelming corruption within Gotham. Batman was able to do everything that Gordon had wanted to do, and the anonymity of his mask empowered him. I think that, in a way, Gordon wishes he could be Batman. As much as Gordon tries to be a shining example of decency within Gotham, he's not without his flaws. His marriage to his wife Barbara, then heavily pregnant with their son James Jr., is strained. Gordon's long hours, the fact that he frequently throws himself in harm's way, and the general frustration with the state of Gotham takes its toll on their relationship. 
Gordon finds himself spending a lot of time with Sergeant Sarah Essen, and the two begin an affair. When Commissioner Loeb learns of this indiscretion, he attempts to use it as leverage to blackmail Gordon. Rather than allow his morals to be compromised and let the corrupt forces of the GCPD have power over him, Jim confesses everything to his wife. This is another great example of the dichotomy of James Gordon. He can be so righteous and pious with zero tolerance for corruption within the police, but at the same time betrays his wife, while she's pregnant by the way, which is an ultra scummy move. He betrays her trust, causing her untold misery, and he has no fear of admitting his affair and fully accepts the consequences. This foreshadows his future approach to Batman. Gordon turns a blind eye to the violence Batman inflicts on suspects and the rights that he violates. You could even argue that he endorses it, so long as he gets the results he wants, which is making Gotham a safer place. In subsequent Commissioner Gordon stories, we don't really see him characterised in the same way. He's not as much of a fighter, he spends most of his time sitting behind a desk or turning up at crime scenes after the fact to provide information. However, there's one significant Commissioner Gordon story I think is worth bringing up, and that is 1988's The Killing Joke. While it is primarily a story about the Joker, about how one bad day drove him over the deep end, Commissioner Gordon has an important role. Gordon demonstrates that the Joker's cynical worldview, that all it takes to turn someone mad is one bad day, is wrong. Gordon has the mental fortitude and courage of his convictions to maintain his sanity. Even after everything he has had to endure, the beating, witnessing the shooting of his daughter, and the humiliation of being paraded around naked by grotesque circus performers and dumped in a cage, he still holds on to his sense of right and wrong. The Joker must be apprehended by the book, although that book seemingly involves letting a rich boy with issues dress up in a cape and punch circus performers. So that brings us to the early 1990s when Batman the Animated Series went into production. Now, this might be the only time I say this, so brace yourself. There's one thing about BTS that has bothered me, and that's the fact that there wasn't very much corruption within Gotham City. I think that the corruption of Gotham is a fundamental reason as to why Batman works so well, and without it, the police's support of Batman seems off. I've talked previously about how censorship shaped BTS and often made it a better show, but the lack of corruption, particularly police corruption, harms the show. The censors were clear that the cartoon should not undermine faith in authority figures, so no corrupt politicians, no corrupt institutions. The show's original writer's bible made multiple references to Jim Gordon's efforts to root out corruption within the GCPD, and how he made powerful enemies along the way. However, this is never seen in the show. The comic book version of Mayor Hamilton Hill was a long-time antagonist working with corrupt councilman Rupert Thorne to outlaw Batman and oust Gordon. Essentially, to take Gotham back to the good old days when they could do whatever they wanted without fear of reprisals. Because the BTAS writers weren't allowed to reference corrupt politicians, Hill instead became an ineffective politician and Rupert Thorne became a substitute for the Mafia. Now there's nothing wrong with that, I just think it's a shame that we didn't get the full picture of how awful Gotham is. Ineptitude is not the same thing as corruption. Likewise, it's not just the costumed, super-powered villains that make it an awful place. It's the institutions of Gotham itself, and the corruption within them, that oppresses the people and crushes their spirits. Now, with that gripe out of the way, what do we know about the BTS version of Commissioner Gordon? Well, he clearly takes some inspiration from Frank Miller's Gordon. He's a broad man, who is older, but not so old that a jump scare could trigger a stroke. There aren't many episodes that centre around him. He mostly acts as a background character, providing exposition. One episode that is about Gordon is I Am The Knight, but it's not so much driven by his actions, more about the void he leaves in the lives of Batman, his daughter Barbara, and Harvey Bullock. After a bus goes wrong, Gordon is shot by Jazzman Jimmy Peake and is left in a coma. Both Batman and Bullock blame themselves for Gordon's injury, although they react to it in different ways. Bullock reacts with anger and hostility towards Batman, while Batman becomes sullen and depressed and hides away in his cave for three days. When Jazzman breaks out of prison and attempts to finish the job, this is enough to break both Bullock and Batman out of their respective funks and save Gordon's life. When Gordon comes to, he immediately blames himself, stating that if he'd been younger, more alert and more like Batman, this wouldn't have happened. We don't see much of his life outside of the GCPD. We know he has a daughter named Barbara and he's very fond of her stuffed bear Wooby for some reason. Outside of that... <sighs> He doesn't seem to be married. Did his wife leave him? Did she pass away? She's never mentioned, so we can only guess. The fact that we never see family portraits in their home suggests to me that she might have left him and he doesn't want to be reminded of her. In terms of his general life, we know that he's a respected officer. Note that in the episode Joker's Favour, he is presented with an award for his years of service, an award he begrudgingly accepts, and he's a man of principle. He supports his officers, even brutes like Harvey Bullock, as seen in POV. 
Harvey Bullock, Rene Montoya and the rookie Wilkes did we ever learn his first name? are under investigation after a sting operation goes bad and over two million dollars is stolen by thieves. Now I'm no policeman but I find it unusual that Commissioner Gordon is present the whole time that the three officers are being interviewed by the internal affairs investigator Hackle. We know that Bullock, Montoya and Wilkes are innocent so seeing Hackle verbally attack them and accuse them immediately causes us to dislike him. However, I'd argue that he's just doing his job, trying to root out corruption, and I bet he has his work cut out for him in Gotham. It's easy to understand why Hackle would be so hostile, metaphorically wading through all that filth. Throughout the interrogation, Gordon interjects, telling Hackle to back off and leave his officers alone. Frankly, Gordon shouldn't even be in the room, which may go some way towards explaining Hackle's hostility. Gordon is trying to undermine him, and the three officers really shouldn't be interviewed together, they should be spoken to individually. When Montoya proves their innocence, Hackle tries to remind Gordon of due process. Those officers were suspended, they shouldn't be running off solving crimes. But Gordon's response to this is to grab Hackle, take their badges forcibly from his pocket, and literally throw him aside. We all cheer this act because we know that Bullock, Montoya and Wilkes aren't on the take, and that their suspension should be lifted, but it isn't due process. In POV, Hackle acts as the literal representation of due process, and we see exactly what Jim Gordon thinks of the rules. There's something he challenges, and definitively throws aside when he's had enough of them. And that's the perfect summary of Commissioner Gordon. He openly works with Batman to violate these criminals' rights, to do things that he would love to do, but the rules and his age prevent him from doing it. He's very tolerant of a rule bender like Harvey Bullock, because he gets results. And the only people to suffer under Bullock tend to be criminals. In Vendetta, he encourages Bullock to stay away from the Spider Conway abduction case, for fear that internal affairs might come sniffing around and find something they shouldn't know about. If Commissioner Gordon were a shining white knight, a bastion of justice, and knew about some illegal behaviour on Bullock's part, he should ensure that Bullock is held to account. But Gordon wants to keep those incidents in the past. I honestly think that if this were any other city, he probably would turn Bullock in. But this is Gotham. And it's funny to see that in Shadow of the Bat when Gordon is framed for being on the take, most people don't seem to be too surprised, even his closest allies. This is Gotham after all. When Barbara puts together a rally to show support for the commissioner, rather than stating his innocence, it seems that the argument they present is that Jim Gordon's done a lot for this city, so at least he deserves bail. I find it really telling, like they've all accepted the evidence that's presented to them and that's it. It must have made for some awkward water cooler talk when Jim was acquitted and went back to the office the following week. One final thought I have to share about Gordon comes from the new Batman Adventures episode Over the Edge. Much of the episode depicts Batgirl's scarecrow toxin induced fever dream, where she dreams that she has died and her father seeks revenge on Batman. However, there's one scene towards the end of the episode where Barbara, upon waking from her dream, decides that she has to tell her father that she's Batgirl. Before she can say anything, Gordon stops her, telling her in no uncertain terms that he cannot know what she is about to say. Now, I take this remark to mean that he does know that Barbara is Batgirl, and by extension that Bruce Wayne is Batman too, but he refuses to be told. He cannot know, because if he did, then he'd have to act on it. He'd rather live in a world of plausible deniability, to just shrug and say, he can't stop Batman, he's got no idea who he is. If he had his suspicions confirmed, then he'd probably have to bring him in. But no, he'd rather keep working with a group of vigilantes to protect Gotham City. Commissioner Gordon clearly has a complex worldview, with multiple shades of grey. In the DC Universe, specifically Gotham City, he's a shining beacon of morality. But if it were the real world, he'd be condemned for his failure to uphold the law and his reliance on vigilantes. Thank goodness this is all make-believe. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to do all the usual stuff, you know, like, share, subscribe, comment, etc. I have enabled the super thanks button, so if you really enjoyed it and you have the means, please feel free to throw a few bucks my way. It really does help. I am investing this money in improving production values. Um, the first thing I bought was some new music, which you've been hearing for the last couple of weeks, thanks to Cat Strike again for providing that music. The content of this video was selected by you, the viewers, in a poll on which character I should talk about in the month of November. Calendar Girl came in first place, and I spoke about her last week. Now this week is Commissioner Gordon. Next week I will be back with a video about The Judge.